Hello everyone and welcome to the virtual presentation of the paper titled CNN based Parkinson's disease assessment using empirical board decomposition. The paper has been uh, authored by myself Ayush Tripathi and Dr. Sunil Kumar Koparapu from TCS Research and Innovation Labs Mumbai. And the paper has been accepted to the third workshop on knowledge driven analytics and systems impacting human quality of life which is a workshop which is being organized as a part of the ACM International Conference on Information and Knowledge Management 2020. So Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder of the central nervous system that affects mainly the motor system and as and when the, as the disease progresses and it worsens there are several non-motor symptoms as well that are observed. So if we talk about the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, uh, they are mostly the early symptoms are tremor, there is stiffness in muscles which causes a difficulty in uh, standing and walking and sitting and so on. As well as there are certain speech problems such as difficulty in speaking or there is softness uh, while speaking. And there are certain other symptoms as well, such as this fatigue in the whole body all the time, and the sleep cycle is affected, and the person who is suffering from this disease is always uh, anxious, and uh, there's a lack of uh, interest in a lot of activities. And a lot of other uh, symptoms that are also common are uh, like a person is uh, many times uh, depressed or has a difficulty in swallowing or has a uh, loss of uh, sense of taste or smell and so on. So the, if we notice, uh, what we'll observe is that these symptoms uh, often are confused with those that occur while a person is aging naturally. So this is a particular point that makes it difficult to diagnose uh, Parkinson's disease. The main cause of Parkinson's disease is a decrease in a special hormone which is called dopamine. So this hormone is a neurotransmitter and is vital for uh, proper functioning of the human, the central nervous system of a human body. And a decrease in this uh, particular hormone uh, is, uh, is what causes Parkinson's disease. So basically there is a decrease in uh, neurons that produce this hormone dopamine. Uh, also, if we notice, uh, there are several speech issues that uh, are observed in a person who is uh, suffering from PD or Parkinson's disease. So, those speech issues are issues like soft voice, there's a difficulty in speaking, uh, the sound appears very monotonous or there's a lot of breath involved while speaking, the voice quality also decreases, uh, the person is not able to articulate certain phones properly. And also there's a decrease in naturalness while speaking. So these are the different speech related issues that are observed when a person suffering from PD is speaking. So if you look at the uh, ways of assessment of uh, PD, we'll, uh, uh, it's unfortunate that there are no specific uh, laboratory tests or any certain instruments that are available to uh, monitor to identify if a person is suffering from Parkinson's disease or not. So the clinician has to rely on certain uh, other certain factors such as tracking motor functions such as gait freezing and analyzing the speech and so on and taking a uh, overview of the patient's history, uh, family history and so on. Uh, which is usually used by a clinician to identify if a person is suffering from Parkinson's disease or not. Uh, one of the most widely used uh, protocols for identifying PD is called the UPDRS or the Unified Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale, uh, which uh, basically evaluates different attributes uh, that is then used by a clinician to identify if a person has PD or not. And those attributes are uh, different motor and non-motor experiences uh, that a person might be facing in daily life as well as uh, certain motor examinations and complications that a person might be facing. So because of this now a uh, study of uh, change in speech of a person becomes uh, can become a, an important tool for identifying PD because it will pave way for a non-invasive method 
and which is easy to administer maybe a person can uh, sit at home and uh, by identifying changes in speech uh, you can uh, one can identify if a person may be suffering from pd or uh, can identify the onset of pd at an early stage so that that's how uh, identifying changes in speech will uh, become an important tool for pd assessment so for this particular work our aim is to uh, look at a person's speech and try to identify if the is the speech is from a healthy person or a person suffering from pd so for this we use a particular data set which is the italian parkinson's voice and speech database it consists of uh, 28 pd speakers 19 of which are male and 9 of which are female and along with that there are 22 healthy controls uh, 10 male and 12 female which have been age matched uh, so that uh, there is no uh, no uh, influence of age on the uh, identification of pd so there are several speech tasks that a person was asked to perform uh, the first of which is uh, two phonations each of the uh, five vowels which are a a e o and u so each of these five uh, phonations uh, a person was asked to sustain this phonation for as long a duration as possible the second task was the execution of uh, syllable pa and syllable ka for five seconds so as many number of repetitions as a person can uh, then the third task is uh, a couple of readings of uh, certain phonetically balanced text in the Italian language. And the final task is a uh, reading of certain phonetically balanced uh, words and phrases which are which too are in the Italian language. The uh, perceptual assessment made by a clinician is based on the UPDRS protocol as uh, mentioned earlier and it is a five point scale uh, starts from zero to four. Uh, in this particular work, our focus is uh, on the sustained phonation task. So we take each of the five uh, sustained phonations and try to identify uh, if the speech comes from a PD person or a healthy control by using phonations. So as uh, you can notice, uh, a per, uh, the duration for which a particular person can sustain a phonation is dependent on the person uh, who is sustaining the phonation. So uh, there is so the amount of time is unequal so to deal with this what we have done is we have segmented the audio files of a person in to one second segments and these segments are uh, non overlapping so after uh, uh, segmenting the audio segments into non overlapping segments of one second each what we finally get is we get the distribution so for phonation R we have 390 uh, utterances and for healthy, healthy healthy controls we have 269 utterances and similarly for other phonations as well so next let's uh, discuss about the technique that we're using which is empirical mode decomposition uh, it is a data driven technique which is used to decompose signals which can be either stationary or non-stationary into certain nicer functions which are called intrinsic mode functions so basically uh, an intrinsic mode function or an IMF as it is referred to uh, satisfies a couple of interesting properties. So the first one is that the number of strictly positive maxima and strictly positive uh, strictly negative minima they are either equal or they differ at post by one. The second property is that uh, the mean value of the envelope that is defined by joining the points of local maxima and the local minima, uh, and if we take the mean value of the envelope that is zero so these are the two properties that an imf should satisfy so now if we look at the empirical mode decomposition or emd algorithm the first step is we find all the locations of local maxima and local minima of the signal speech signal or s of n uh, which as it is referred here we then define an initial residue r not n as being equal to sn now from the local maxima and minima that we have identified we extrapolate using a cubic spline interpolation and then we obtain the upper and lower envelopes by connecting all those maxima and minima points respectively 
and after that we compute a mean envelope which is uh, defined as simply the upper and lower envelopes added together and divided by 2. Uh, next up we update the initial residue uh, as uh, the R0n minus the mean envelope and then we repeat these uh, steps up to the point that this R0 becomes uh, uh, satisfies the properties of an IMF. So once once we have an R0 which is an intrinsic mode function what we do is uh, we obtain the first residue uh, which is R1n as the original speech signal uh, subtracted by the IMF. So this IMF we refer to as uh, H1n and so now R1n becomes our residue and then we again repeat all these steps as above. So again uh, with R1n as the starting point we obtain the upper and lower envelopes and repeat all that process to get the next IMF which is uh, H2n and so on and so forth. We repeat this process up to a point that R K N uh, either becomes uh, monotonic or has only a single maxima or minima so that no further envelopes can be uh, obtained. So at that point we say that uh, we have obtained our final residue and we curtail the EMD algorithm. So now after all this process uh, we can say that the speech signal SN is represented as the final residue R K N and a sum of K IMFs which are uh, the summation of uh, H I N for all uh, for each of the K from 1 to capital K. So K is the number of uh, iterations in this case. So if we look at this example, we'll see that uh, let's say we start from a signal S N which is of one second duration and then we slowly start the process. We'll get these different I M S. So for this case, uh, capital K is equal to 9. So we get nine different IMFs and a residue. So if you look at the residue, there you can identify that there is no further envelope uh, that can be obtained by uh, joining the strictly positive maximas or the strictly positive negative minimals. So at that point, we curtail the uh, algorithm. So the hypothesis of this work is that a healthy speech is more coherent than the speech of a PD patient. So because of the coherency uh, in healthy speech, it in fact gets decomposed faster than PD speech. So the value of capital K as mentioned in the previous slide will be less for a healthy speech to decompose completely uh, as compared to a uh, PD speech. So this is the hypothesis of our work. Uh, so if you look at the uh, first five IMFs for uh, PD and healthy speech for a particular phonation R. Uh, we can see that the uh, on the right side we have uh, graphs for healthy speech. So we can see that uh, it gets decomposed uh, faster than uh, PD speech. So in even in five iterations, uh, the uh, healthy speech has decomposed to a greater extent uh, as compared to PD speech. So this is the underlying hypothesis of our work. Next, if we look at the experimental setup, uh, what we are doing is we are using a leave one speaker out cross validation. Uh, since the number of speakers, uh, the number of utterances totally is far too less to uh, look at a uh, conventional train test split, uh, we can see that uh, by using uh, a leave one speaker out cross validation, we are able to uh, validate the efficacy of our model and also we don't have to do a train test split. So for class assignment, uh, what we are doing is we are doing a majority voting. So what we basically do is we take all the one second utterances for a particular speaker and we sum the probabilities for both the classes BD and healthy and based on the sum of probabilities we can assign the class based on which probability is higher. So again uh, to sum up we have a leave one speaker out cross validation model and for class assignment we have a majority voting. So that makes our model speaker independent. So this is the overview of the proposed uh, 1D CNN architecture. So we have as inputs 
different uh, IMFs, the five IMFs and the final residue. So after patch normalization, we have passed it through convolution, uh, 1D convolutional neural network layers, and after which we use a global max pooling layer and we concatenate uh, the vectors from the each of the six uh, parallel uh, CNNs and pass it through a dense layer, which through which we finally get a prediction. So for our purpose, we have uh, fixed the uh, filter length to be 320 and a stride of 160. So in the hindsight, uh, it is equivalent to saying that we are taking 20 milliseconds of speech with a stride of 10 milliseconds, uh, which is very common in speech processing applications. And then we are extracting uh, for each of the individual uh, IMF or the residue, we are obtaining a number of features, which is equal to the number of filters that we have taken in the 1D CNN layer. And then we are concatenating it and passing through a simple uh, classifier. So that is how we can uh, decompose this uh, 1D CNN architecture to uh, talk about it in simpler terms. In terms of the results, so for different uh, phonations, we have uh, different accuracy. So for example, we have for the phonation R, we have an accuracy of 76%. For A, we have 76.4%. For E, it is 72%. Uh, for O, it is 72.4%. And for O, it is 72%. Also, uh, please note that the specificity and sensitivity uh, values are also given, which are the number of uh, LD utterances identified as LD and the number of PD utterances identified as PD respectively. Uh, so for each of the uh, experiments, we have uh, taken five reruns in order to account for randomness in the uh, neural networks. So, so here's the confusion matrix for each of the five runs. Uh, so we can observe that uh, the confusion matrix is fairly stable. So there's not much of a difference made by this uh, randomness of the neural network. Uh, next up, if we can uh, look from the graph here, we can see that the uh, last three IMFs and the residue are the most uh, differentiating signals. So what we have done is we have just taken the last couple of uh, IMFs, H4 and H5 and the residue R5 and looked at the accuracies of uh, classification and which two are fairly high uh, if we compare it with the accuracies which are obtained by taking all the five uh, IMFs and residue, they are uh, still lower, but still we, they are performing fairly well. And for A, for instance, we are getting an accuracy of 72.8%, for R it is 69.6% and so on. Next, uh, if we just take the residue, in that case, uh, we get an accuracy which is uh, slightly lower, but uh, uh, still, uh, we can perform uh, better than a uh, random guess, which is 50%. So, for instance, for R, we have 64.4% accuracy. For I, we have 62.7% accuracy and so on. So, in order to conclude, uh, you can say that uh, PD is a chronic uh, neurogenerative disease, which is uh, difficult to diagnose since the symptoms are often confused with natural aging. Uh, the detection of PD by using speech is an important step as it paves way for a non-invasive method and that is what we have done in this work. We have tried to use a technique which is called empirical mode decomposition and uh, by using that we have uh, uh, identified uh, different IMFs and uh, we have been trying to classify PD and HC by using the IMFs. So instead of uh, ex hand, uh, extracting handcrafted features from the IMS, what uh, we have done is uh, that we have tried to machine learn those features instead of uh, having uh, trying to extract certain handcrafted features, maybe like zero crossing rate or so on. Uh, we just directly fed it into a 1D CNN model, uh, the raw IMS, and then we have tried to learn the discriminating properties uh, which can be used to classify PD and HC subjects. So this is a promising work uh, and will pave way for more uh, models which we can have to detect uh, Parkinson's disease by using speech. So thank you everyone for listening and attending the presentation and hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.